Hello, hello. I think we're live. I'm going to wait a moment to see some attendees join. There we go. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Boom Learning Back to School Symposium 2023. Um, I can hear myself. Oopsies. <laughs> I can hear my YouTube stream. Um, this is the uh, Boom for Common Subjects, ELA, Math, and Social Studies. Today joining me is Andy Seltzer of K8 Math Sense, Emily from Sitting in History, and Anne Tracy of Little Library of Learning. Today they're going to be presenting a bit about what they've made and their strategies for uh, engaging with the students and making their students happy and love learning from the things they make. Um, there's a chat bubble down below for Zoom. If you'd love to tell us where you're from and what kind of boom cards you make um, and how long you've been making them, that'd be awesome to hear from you. And also a Q&A bubble as well. That's a great place for us to find questions for the presenters, as well as for near the end of the uh, webinar when we'll have a little more popcorn discussion and we can answer some of your more direct questions. Um, <clears throat> without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to Angie from K8 Math Sense, who will talk a bit about uh, math boom cards and I love them. I think they're really fun and interesting. So please, Angie, uh, let us see what you've what you've made. Thank you so much, Kyle. I live near Dayton, Ohio. I've been creating boom cards for about six years, and I have retired from a background of editing textbooks and assessment resources for major math textbook publishers for elementary and high school. So now I take time to tutor mathematics and to write supplemental materials. So my boom cards are self-checking activities originally based on printable card sets. I created more than 100 sets from primary through middle school plus quite a few sets for basic facts. And these are available as PDFs in the printable section of Boom, but let me show you how it works with the online part. So let me share my screen. Okay, it just takes a moment to get this up here. Okay, is my screen visible? Yep, we can see you. Okay. I'm sorry, this is not the right screen. I'm not sure why that came up. Hold on. We're seeing the uh, your library screen. Oh, for some reason I'm I'm seeing um, the main screen. So let me go back. So you're seeing this. Um, can you now see where it says math review, math review? Yep. For some reason. Yes. For some reason, a different one was coming up on my computer. OK, so here we are. Um, so let's go to a third grade deck. So on the left, um, I have the topic says the different grade levels. So the third grade math set, we're going to go down to fractions on the number line. This is actually the most popular game set that people have purchased, and it's also um, very uh, popular with Boom. So on all my decks, you can see uh, images of math uh, playing cards, and there's different kinds of cards. Um, in this example, with fractions on the number line, the star cards show a fraction. Uh, the cards marked with a little triangle show the fraction in words or a fraction of words. And then we have the uh, cards marked with a square that show a bar and cards marked with a circle that show a location on the number line. So students do some analysis and decide which two cards represent the same fraction. It won't necessarily be one of the star cards. Uh, in this case, we have three fourths and we have three fourths as a bar on the number line. And the students will get the ding sound. Okay, here's the next screen. Again, there are various types of cards. So students get a lot of practice as they analyze and, and match cards. In this case, we have 
one third and one third that just happen to be coming up in the first two spots, but those cards do appear in random positions each time the student plays. On this deck, I mean, on this uh, screen, um, notice we have them just matching the fraction word and the fraction uh, symbol. So anyways, there's 20 cards in a deck and they can, I mean, 20 screens with the playing cards shown. Um, so students get a lot of practice as they go through those. Now let's look at a fifth grade deck. I'm gonna quit this one, go back to the um, grade levels. Here's a fifth grade deck on understanding volume. Again, these are designed to really help students understand what's going on with volume. So the cards with the star just show a rectangular prism. The cards with the squares show the top layer of cubes and a height. So they can view it and decide that the top layer on this card is three by three. So they can match it to, they can match these two three by three by three cards, or maybe there would be the expression or the volume. In this case, they've got two that have the same um, dimensions. On this one, um, you have to do a little mental math, but the numbers have been chosen to help do mental math more easily because most of them with the dimensions have fives in them. So five times two gives you 10 and 10 times four is easy to compute mentally. Here we have, <coughs> excuse me, um, this match would be five times five times four is 100. Okay, I'm gonna show you a different deck. So we'll quit out this, this one. Let's go back to an eighth grade example. So the eighth grade example I'm gonna show is fractions as repeating decimals. So I'll just show this really briefly. So with this, they have either a fraction as a numerator and denominator or a fraction as division or as a over bar or as the digits that repeat like 0 0.2727 27 repeating. In this case, it's just matching the division. So again, it helps them understand that a fraction can mean division and that repeating decimals can be shown in two ways. Now notice that the corner of the screen underneath the logo has a four character code. In this case, it's eight and one, two. Everything I have is closely matched um, to objectives. Um, eight and one, two means grade eight, the number strand, uh, the first uh, cluster in Common Core and the second goal on a free goal list that I also offer. Let me go back and show you another freebie that is available that shows all, that helps you see the different um, ways um, these are these are aligned with Common Core. If I choose this grade eight math review deck, which is a freebie, you'll see that at the bottom of the screen it has a goal eight e one one, so that's grade eight equations and cluster one and so on. Let me skip and show you the next one because I'm getting close to running out of time. So here's the repeating decimal sample screen. So these free decks have 10 different sample screens. They're also color coded. The green corners are geometry. The orange or gold is the um, algebra equations and so on. And there's goals at the bottom. Also, if you look at the printables, if you know those codes, it's very easy to um, see the same thing. So let me go back to my uh, screen real quickly and show you that if you click on printables, you can download a list of goals and that the goal list uh, is set up in sections for the different domains or uh, and clusters within Common Core, but then they have a goal number. So underneath each one of these color bands, 
there's a list of objectives. And if you know a specific objective that has um, a boom deck, you can also find the printable by using that same uh, goal number. In this case, 5F26 stands for a boom deck with multiplying fractions and you, or dividing unit fractions. And you can also click to see the printable games for dividing unit fractions. So I think I'm out of time. So I will stop there and I can maybe show a little bit more if there's a specific question. Wow, thank you very much. Um, that's awesome. I, I really like your boom cards, um, but I'm kind of a math person. I was wondering, could you show us a, a quick example of a geometry uh, sure. item you've created? Okay, let me make sure I get the right screen this time. So I'll go back to decks. Uh, area of a triangle is a freebie that anyone can download. So for this one, students um, can see the dimensions of a rectangle and half of that rectangle would be a triangle. And so the formulas relate to taking half of the two dimensions that are marked. So in this case, you'd look at these different parts and see if you have a, a match somewhere. Um, so I didn't preview this, but um, let's see. Seven times 12, um, be 42. Looks like these two must match because, wait a minute, that's 100. Yeah, half of 160 is 80, okay? So there's one of your geometry ones. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, we have another good question, but I'm going to save it till the end. It's about TEKS from Texas and your, if you've correlated at all with Texas. Uh, we I, can wait to the end if you want. Okay. You um, I'll save it till the end. Um, but thank you so much for showing us uh, your work. I think it's really inspiring. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, of course. Um, Emily from Sitting in History is here to talk about uh, boom cards that she's created, which are uh, excellent as well. I'm uh, very happy that she's making boom cards for our store because it's a niche that we need more of. Uh, so please, Emily, um, let us see what you've been building. All right, welcome everyone. Is that large and visible? Looks good, looks yep. good. Okay. All right, I'm Emily Rayo. Uh, I always tell my kids Rayo sounds like Mayo. They never pronounce my name right. This is my sixth year teaching. Um, I teach four grades of social studies at a small K-8 in Oregon. And it's wonderful. I get to see my students for four years in a row, see their growth. I love it. Um, I started creating boom cards back in 2020 during the pandemic when I needed a way for my students to still have practice and still hold them accountable, but through a computer. Um, and I am also a corgi mom to Pino there on the left-hand side. He is currently asleep at my feet down here. Uh, he is a big fat mama's boy. So for boom cards in social studies, um, I use them primarily for extra practice for kids. I use them for early finisher activities and for emergency sub plans. All the boom cards that I have created and are that are posted in my store relate to practicing US states, capitals, and their regions. Um, but I'll talk about a few other ideas if you're wanting to create your own that you can also do for social studies. So for the practice, I've set up my boom cards so there are different levels for each type so that I can easily differentiate for kids as they practice. Um, so students who have never touched a state before or looked at a state map, there are ones that have, they have four of the states on a map, and then they have the four names off to the side. Okay. There are ones where they have just a large map with three options to choose from. And um, as we kick it up in difficulty, they just have the state outline, or maybe the state with the capital start on there and three options to choose. 
And then we really kick it into high gear and they just get the state option. And then they have to write in the answer. Um, and it will, if they don't type it in and spell it correctly, it will mark it wrong. Um, capital lowercase doesn't matter, but they do have to actually spell the state correctly in order to get the answer right. So it makes it really easy for kids to track and see, all right, I nailed this one, let's try this one. I can see on the reports um, side of Boom and see how kids are doing as well, or if they're just practicing the same deck over and over and over and over again, as middle schoolers do. Um, I also have used my Boom cards as early finisher activities. Uh, boom cards to my kids are like mini games. So I just have the link to their login screen in Google Classroom. And then if they finish early, they know where to go to log in and see. Um, I've just assigned all of the decks to them so they have access to everything. So here is the some, some examples. They've got, you know, dragging the state name to the correct state, drag and drop and correct your answer. We've got Delaware. Um, and then as we move through here, they have the state on the map. This is my freebie that's in Boom that you are free to go use in your classroom uh, as soon as you get started. Um, so they have four state options and they need to match to the four maps that they have. And then I also use them as uh, emergency sub plans, right? When the unexpected happens, uh, boom cards are still there. As long as your students have used them before, um, they're really great to at least if you've got a short lesson, you don't know what to fill, you give them 15 minutes, they can practice their states, their capitals, their regions, uh, they can compete against their neighbor, do the same deck, see who can get the better score. Um, and then you as a teacher can then, you know, check that report the next day or whenever to see that they all actually did their work. Uh, which is great. So I've got some region decks here. Um, so they have all of the states in the region and they need to select the right state, right? Um, so we've got Maine, they have to do it for the capital as well as another set that I have. Right. Uh, this is up in the Northeast. And then there is also, we've got the South region for the capital. So every format of my card has a capital version, a regional version, and a state version. There are a ton of different ways to use boom cards on social studies. And as Kyle said, I think it's a uh, missed opportunity for a lot of social studies teachers um, or uh, self-contained classrooms as well. Um, you can use these to practice countries, country capitals, oceans and continents. Um, I am shocked every year when my eighth graders come to me after having them for three years and they still stare at me and think China is a continent. Um, so everyone needs to practice. You can use them for map skills, either different types of maps or different parts of maps, how to use latitude and longitude, um, looking at different government types. Okay? If that's one of your standards, it is here in Oregon. Students need to be able to identify the different types of governments there are. You could use them as timeline activities. Uh, learning about U.S. presidents, like my high school junior year teacher, we had to memorize every president in order with the years that they served, would be a great way for students to practice. They're great for vocabulary review. Um, I think there's a way you, you can use text boxes in Zoom, so you can easily do it as a way for an, analyzing primary sources. Um, if they're shorter, quicker, like political cartoons or something, it would be an easy way for kids to be able to self-check how they're doing. Um, they're great for unit reviews, okay? or if you do any sort of reflection work for projects or end of year, um, anything of the sort. Right? The, the options are pretty limitless with social studies, just like math, language, arts, all the things. Um, I do want to go back and show here just a couple of other uh, options here. So these are the this is the filling in the correct state. They get the state on the map with a text box to then type in um, versus you know, the multiple choice options or regions here.
Um, and that's all I have. Um, I would love if you have ideas or want tips or tricks on how to use these in your social studies classroom, I would love for you to reach out. There's my you know, social media, email, carrier pigeon, whatever is fine. And then this is the cover of what my card looks like for the free deck in my store. This is awesome. Thank you very much, Emily. Um, I feel like I need your boom cards. I, I want to play Angie's for fun, but I actually need, <laughs> I need yours. I, I need to go back to school and learn things. That I, I, I actually had to assign these to my mom because she realized she didn't know any states or capitals and so she <laughs> used them to practice herself <laughs> it could yeah it could be great for even me to memorize them and like catch up i suppose is the right term um i i do have a question for you um it's pretty simple i noticed angie is doing something similar and coding using color codes could you explain your colors yeah you, of course just what are you doing with the color? Change my screen here. So all of my slowly coming in. There we go. We good? Yep, I can okay. see it now. Uh, I color coded all of my decks to make it easier. Um, the peachy colored ones are all going to be for re different regions. The gold color are all for capitals. And then the teal color are all related to states. And then the uh, bundles are also coded the same way. So the blue one is including all of the state ones. The yellow one includes all of the re capitals ones. And then the region ones are thrown in both. All right. Okay, I I like that. That's easy to read. Yeah, yeah. easy for kids to identify too in a, sure. in a quick moment. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Emily. Um, I love this material that you've created. It's very niche, which is very good for you. Uh, uh, so please keep it up. I'm going to go thank shopping you. there. Um, I'd love to introduce Anne Tracy next of Little Library of Learning. She has lots of amazing things to share uh, with you all today as well. So please, Anne, thank you for being here and let's see what you've what you've got. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anne Tracy. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, share my screen. Let's wait just one minute. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> desktop get my powerpoint i uh, was a school librarian for more than 20 years and um today we're going to talk about using boom cards in ela and the library is very much related to ela a little bit um about myself Sorry, I'm just doing this incorrectly. <laughs> One minute. So I have a master's in English and another master's in library science. I am a Google certified educator, levels one and two. That's me in the library. I live in New York with my Cocker Spaniel Killian. My boom store is called Little Library of Learning. It's also the name of my Teachers Pay Teachers store and my blog. As a librarian, I do have some library boom decks. Um, one is putting books in alphabetical order by the author's name if they're fiction books, or putting books in um, Dewey Decimal Order if they're nonfiction. These are draggable. You put the spine of the book onto the bookcase. The other one is about book care. Um, is it an X or a check standing on a book? Is that a good thing to do? Um, keeping your book out in the rain, is that a good thing to do? And the one um, with the pirates is sorting books into fiction and nonfiction. And you drag these pirates and their books into the right treasure chest. So there are a number of areas that you can uh, use boom cards for in ELA, such as reading comprehension, vocabulary, parts of speech, prefixes and suffixes, 
synonyms and antonyms, and all kinds of phonics activities. These are some of my ELA decks. We have um, choose the correct synonym and build a snowman. After every couple of correct answers, they get to build another part of the snowman, his face, his hat, his mittens, so on. Below that is uh, building CVC words. So we have an audio clip and you'd say build a word and they drag the sunflower words, letters rather, into place to make the CVC word. Then we have one for Veterans Day, where you would drag the correct word into the blank. You could use fill in the blank for this, and these ones are drag and drop text boxes. A soldier was proud to receive a medal, M-E-D-A-L, or a medal, M-E-T-A-L, for bravery. And the other one is also building a turkey after choosing the correct word. So today I'm going to show you how to build a deck it is uh, called the Feed the Friends activity. You may have seen these in other subject areas. And this is about synonyms. Um, you have a target word, big, and then there are three words um, on the fish, large, small, and tiny, and you would feed the correct synonym to the shark. And Shark Week has been everywhere on the TV, so it's a good one for Shark Week. I ordinarily start out in PowerPoint, and I will put a text box with the word and group it with the fish. Then if you right click or control click, you can save all those images and then I upload them into Boom. There are a number of clip artists that have these Feed the Friends uh, clip art sets, Chirp Graphics, Erin Colling Design, Lee Mesh, Scrapping Doodles, GG Designs. You might wanna put a nice background. You can just put a plain color background, but I like kind of the scenic ones, depending on the theme of the deck. They come in a set. So this one was the ocean animals, all the animals, and what they would probably feed on. This one is farm animals and what they would feed on. I actually have a rhyming words activity using this set. Some of them are not animals. This is for Christmas, feed Santa a cookie, feed the reindeer a carrot, and so on. This one is Halloween friends with all the things these Halloween monsters might eat. And camping friends, feed the tent, a sleeping bag, feed a log to the campfire. So let's go to Boom and we'll see how this is done. Okay, just quickly preview the deck and I'm gonna very quickly show you how to build it. So here we have our shark and our target word on the wooden sign is big. And we have large, small, and tiny. Now, these are all draggable, but only one of them is correct. So we're going to take large and feed it to the shark. The word disappears. We click submit, and we find out we are correct. Okay, on the manta ray, the target word is true. I'll show you what happens if you put the wrong one in. So if you say fake, whoops, it pops back out, and they have another chance to try again. So true would be real. And then small, be tiny, get, find, loud, oops, noisy. Okay, so then how would you do this? Basically what you would have is, I'm gonna to have to go back to the studio instead of preview a minute. Okay, so we're in the studio, which is how to build a boom card deck. And we have a blank card. I already put the target word in just to save a little time. So we have cold. I'm gonna put in our background image. So put in our ocean. If you go up here to image, we can drag in the shark. A little smaller, okay. For the feed the animal activity, you need to duplicate the animal or whatever it might be. So over here on the duplicate, I'll just offset him a tiny bit. And then we need the things that he's going to eat. Sorry. So we have warm. Okay. 
we have hot. And we have chili, not that kind of chili. Okay, the animal that is on the bottom needs to be marked as a drop zone. The words that you are gonna feed him need to be marked as draggable, but only one of them is the correct answer. So that would be chili. You see the little pointing finger? We're gonna click on that and drag it to the flag. That indicates it's the correct answer to go in the drop zone. The top animal has to be marked as draggable. And then just be sure in your, if you know what Z order is, the layers, that has to be on to the front. So I'm just gonna pull him back into line and we'll just see if this worked correctly. So our target word is cold. The synonym for that is chili. And that is correct. Okay. Sorry. Quit, yes. Okay. And just to finish up, as with all boom card decks, you need to go to details and fill in a brief description, a price, Give credit to your clip artists, keywords, the grade level, the subject, if you want it to play in sequential or random order. And if you sell them on other marketplaces like TPT, once you publish the deck, you will get a link to put in your TPT product for um, buyers to access. And that basically is how you make boom decks for ELA. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anne. <laughs> I like your shark. It's a, and you have a turtle, a tortoise. I'm sorry, a sea turtle. Sea so, turtle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that was awesome. Um, yeah, that's a little trick where the things that you drag on the screen can hide under each other. And that's why you, that's why there's that visual trick of making the drop zone on top. That way the fish disappear by hiding under the shark yeah that's great um well thank you all for presenting um if there's anyone in the audience has questions for the panelists please go ahead and type them in the q a chat or in chat and we will direct them to the audience but um at the moment i just have a few questions that might help uh steer the conversation a bit um Angie, uh, someone had a question for you about uh, Tex in Texas, because some of the Common Core, there's different standards now. Some of the states are breaking away with their own uh, standards. Are you taking any inspiration from those two when you um, organize your listings? Uh, let me just say that in my previous work for publishers, when I had to compare uh, content across different states, there was a lot of consistency. And honestly, most of the same topics appear somewhere in the curriculum. So if, if it doesn't seem like there's a deck at the grade level that you're looking for, for, for your Texas objectives, you could just use a keyword search and see if there's something there that might be at the next grade level or previous grade level. You can also look for a crosswalk type document. Uh, often states will create a, a crosswalk document that lists their state objectives and how it aligns or doesn't align to Common Core standards. So once you know that Common Core number, it will give you um, your grade level, it will give you your domain or um, sort of, um, we used to, well, anyways, they use the word domain for different areas of math, like algebra, geometry, measurement, and so on. So you'd find that. Um, and then if you look in my decks, you, you can look for the grade level and the color and, you know, look at the list of what's available. Okay, I see. And you think you'll up, update as things change, obviously you'll. If there seems to be a lot of demand for putting in the uh, text objectives, I could add those in as keywords to my descriptions, but I haven't done that as of now. 
you can see what's available pretty easily if you download the free, um, look at the free sampler for each uh, grade level for three through eight. And then you can skim through that to see if there's something that's going to help your students um, with some of your um, Texas objectives. Okay, that makes sense. Well, thank you uh, for answering that. Um, Emily, I was wondering, could you show us one of your social study decks that your students really like or the one that's really popular? Sorry sure. to put you on the spot so suddenly like that. <laughs> no worries. I just missed the unmute button. All right. Smooth over so here. Yeah, I would say one of the ones, um, I was, my free one is the most popular one, even with my students. They like to see it on the map. Um, the next ones would be where you just get the one single state here um, so that you can see it on a map. I know. As the students learn them more and more, seeing the individual state, they like that. They like that challenge. But starting out, they would they much rather see it here placed on the map. And then they just have three options to click. And then if they get it right, it'll move them on to the next one. If they get it wrong, okay, then they get another chance. It'll cross it out for them. Um, so it's just an easier way to learn them when they're just getting started there. OK, I see. Yeah. So the lower, if it's not as challenging, it maybe gets played repeatedly more often. Yeah, which is why I like the reports. Then I can see how those kids are doing if they're taking the easy way out and just doing that same deck over and over and over again, but they got 100% like six times in a row, or if they are actually using it and improving each time. Sure. All right. Uh, awesome. Thank you for showing that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Stephanie, if you have any questions you see, please let me know because I'm uh, running out of them. But <laughs> um, I'm wondering, Anne, Anne, do you have any um, advice for publishers who are just getting started? It's like something you learned early on that was like, oh, that's just really useful. Well, I started out like a lot of teachers using the boom decks in my room. And before I was a, a seller and a publisher. And um, I think it's good to, you know, look around the site and see what's out there and um, try out. There's so many, you know, free directs you can try out or you could, you know, buy one for like a modest price. And I, I you know, I recommend starting simple. Like yesterday I went to the master um, class and, you know, it's like, wow, really like um, advanced techniques and and so forth. But if you start out simple, it seems like magic to the children. Just start out with, you know, like a background, you know, buy some nice clip art, have like an E. I do a lot of with the lower grades um, being in elementary school. So the, the boom decks are fairly simple, not like those uh, geometry ones. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> so I think I would start out very simple. And then you could add in the fancy. Like I never really did the feed the animal thing until very recently. Because again, you have to be aware of the um, the layers and the order, and you know, making sure everything is linked the way it ought to be linked, and so on. Um, so I, I would recommend just starting simple, you know, using them yourself, practicing with them, you know, starting out with very simple designs, and then you could build your way up from there. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, start simple. Don't try to rush. Um, that's that's the big one I've heard from other publishers as well. We Hi, a, Stephanie. Yeah, and anyone can answer this in any order. I, may, I mean, maybe we start, Emily was discussing this a little bit, but can you give some of our attendees just real world applications for where you best fit boom cards into your curriculum? So I know some of you, you're one-on-one -on -one teachers, but in the classroom as well. And I also am still tutoring right now. Um, so I use them as well. And one thing I really like about them is that I can get very granular with my students' issues. So if I've got a child that needs to work on morphology or multiple, you know, multisyllabic words, I can really go narrow in on what that particular student needs. So I guess I'm just wondering where in, whether you are one-on-one -on -one as a tutor or you're in a classroom, where do you fit boom cards in to your daily routine when you're working with a student or students? And you wanna start? 
Sure. Um, well, I'm very fortunate in the library. We don't have to give any grades, no report cards, no progress reports, nothing. I guess we could just have fun and games all day long. Who knows? Um, I think for the classroom teachers, um, again, the review of the uh, skills, I think they can use them you know, in small groups, they might be testing in the back of the room and they need something to keep um, their little guys busy. And if they have Chromebooks or iPads, they can, you know, do them themselves. I usually put uh, directions right on each page of the deck so they don't have to bother the teacher. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And I give, you know, a very succinct but clear uh, directions. In the library, the way I use them is um, I have a smart board and as I'm checking out books, I give them something on the smart board. So they know, get the book checked out quietly, quickly, and line up by the smart board. And I usually put up a boom deck there and they can just play it. So it keeps things a little bit orderly, something for them to do. And it's, you know, relatively quick. So I probably use them in a little different way, um, but that's how I use them. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for sharing that with us. What about you, Angie? Where do you use well, them? When I'm tutoring my students, um, we often go through like a review packet of different topics. And if there's certain topics that they have trouble with, um, I choose one of the ones that a boom deck is available for and go ahead and pop over my screen and they can do a little work um, right with me on trying that particular topic. Um, Kyle, can I take an, another minute or two just to um, point out those freebies? Because I kind of rushed through it. And um, this yes. is a way to help your math, um, your math teachers uh, see what um, what might be available and how to find things easily. So I'm going to share uh, an Acrobat screen. Can you see it now? Yep, looks good. Okay. So I popped up, I think, grade eight before, but this is the grade six freebie from the printable section of the Boom Store where you can print out a list of sixth grade math goals. These are based on Common Core, but about 90% of it would probably apply to other states as well. And again, the shaded part is actually your Common Core cluster statements, like compute fluidly with multi-digit numbers and find common factors of multiple multiples. And those are broken down um, into uh, different um, goals. So like multiplying decimals is a different goal than dividing decimals. Finding common factors is different than finding least common multiples and so on. But in terms of my depth numbering, it, for this, it would be grade six, it would be N, six N, and then you'd have your cluster number, which would be like six N um, two. And then if it's greatest common factor, you'd be looking for six N two, four or two, five. You see how that, becomes a four digit code or four character code. Then if you download this freebie, you can also go to the free Boom Interactive Sampler that has different decks. And if you wanna to go to any of those specifically, um, there's uh, links to the ones that are in my Boom store, okay? And then there's also links to the printable games because those same kind of cards that are on the screen um, are available as printable decks of cards. And students can, and I do this with my students all the time, we play card games such as Uno, where you match a value or um, the suit, or you can play a game like Concentration, where maybe the teacher, um, like for this area of a triangle, maybe they just lay out the cards that have the triangle and the answer, like the, the, the area. And the students match those not there's nine triangles they match them to nine values for area you know depending on the level of your student you can adjust it for difficulty when you're doing hands-on matching so anyways check out the printable section of the store and you can get those you can get those free those free ones okay awesome yeah those are great in class a check check sheets and a way to lay out what the standard is because Lisa is already saying, Angie, the list would also be good for me to list my texts that match the Common Core standard. So there seemed to be a little overlap with them where, oh, I can translate. So yeah, thank you for uh, sharing sharing that. We and had another- little checklist on the right, you could use that to write dates that you cover different topics in your class. 
You could also write like what other activities on Boom that you have found. Like, you know, if you have your, your stuff in a folder somewhere and it reminds you that you've got some other Boom activity, it doesn't have to be mine. You might have a different Boom activity that covers that particular goal, you know, so. Gotcha. Yeah, um, we, we got another pretty good question uh, about the publisher groups. Do you follow one another in the Facebook publisher group or read blogs from other publishers to see what's going on? Is there any inspiration for your work coming from communicating with other other authors, I guess is what I'm really asking. This is for anybody. Um, Maybe Emily. I haven't, I haven't <laughs> Since really, uh, participated in like the Facebook groups so much, but I have uh, followed some of the other sellers. And I, one thing I will say is that the Boom community is very supportive of one another. You, know, you might think, oh, competition. I don't want to help another math teacher or this and that, but it's so not the case. And I communicate a lot of times by email and I would say, well, I'm having a little trouble with this deck. And, you know, I know some people are way more experienced and they are so helpful. And I know I've emailed you a hundred times. I can't get this layering thing to work. Um, so I think people are very supportive and helpful, whichever way you reach out to them. Don't do it alone. You don't have to. Yeah, that's great to hear actually. Um, I, yeah, I, the publisher of Facebook community I found is, all I really need to use when I go and I have a question. Um, I think it's great and everyone is ready to step up and help no matter how significant, insignificant you might think your question is, everyone's right there to jump in. I actually haven't uh, seen the Boom developer group, so I guess I'll have to hop online and get into that one. <laughs> yeah, it might help, might be helpful to see. Um, I'm gonna share my screen actually very briefly. Um, just to show something about um, the store that may help everyone who's attending. Um, here's just an example from sitting in history, a listing. But if we go back to um, Emily's page, we can follow Emily right here with this button. And then to find your followers, you go to your settings and they're over here in the social tab. Oh, here's just some random examples of uh, authors I'm following. But yes, this can help you if you like the work that um, one of these publishers is making. Um, you can go follow them and then you'll see new things they publish and be notified. And it will also help us tailor the store page for you to it, for things you need specifically, which will help the publishers pop up more often for you. Um, we're almost out of time. There's only a couple minutes. So I just want to, again, thank you all for being here. Uh, I had a lot of fun hosting this webinar with you. I love your boom cards. I think they're colorful and awesome and uh, very inspiring. I want to make them and learn from them all at the same time. We've added some information in the chat for everyone attending. Um, there's a feedback survey for us. It's just so you can tell us to do better <laughs> or uh, just thank us maybe if you'd like. Um, there is another panel coming up. There's actually two, the uh, webinar for Boom for Music and Occupational Therapy panels are coming up next. We w are recording this for everybody and it will be put on our YouTube channel, hopefully by Friday. I'm gonna work really hard to get all those videos on YouTube and Vimeo. So we'll have FAQs with the symposium uh, uploaded for you there. And um, that's that's about it for me. I would let everybody go and uh, to join the next uh, panel or to go about your lovely day. And I want to thank you all again for being here. And I, I'm signing off. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity. It was great. Thanks for all the participants for listening in. <laughs> thank you.